Hey guys, this is Dylan from American Concealment Solutions. Today we're going to be breaking down what makes a good everyday carry holster. Uh, we started a pocket dump series where I broke down a lot of the stuff that I personally carry, and now we're gonna go down even further into painful detail on all of the different pieces of gear that I carry and uh, the why behind it. So everyone has that drawer of shame where it's a, just a drawer full of gimmicky holsters or holsters that you've just kind of wore and didn't really care for and you got rid of them over and over again. You have it, I have it, your grandma has it, your pediatrician has it, your baseball coach has it, they all have it. So um, let's kind of use this, or I wanna kind of use this video as something to kind of help someone that's in the market uh, to look for a holster. Now, I am a owner of American Concealment Solutions, and we are a holster company. We also sell cool shirts and hoodies like this. So, um, I have skin in this game. I'm not bought or paid for anything on that. So, But these are going to be all American Concealment Solutions holsters. We feel that we make the holsters with specifications appropriate enough for um, everyday carry, and we're gonna explain why they are built the way that they're built. And again, a lot of other, I mean, there are other holster companies that have these specifications. So we're not, you know, making a call to action here or anything. We're just showing you what we have and why we have it. So um, the first thing that we're going to talk about is the holster material. Now, you know, when you're talking about holster material, there's really the only option is kydex i mean there's leather and there's nylon and there's, there's a bunch of other gimmicky stuff you're not going to want to mess with nylon or leather in my humble opinion mainly because it's not secure enough as it is with a nice hard material kydex is like a hard thermoplastic um, to where leather and nylon they're malleable fabrics to where once you get that gun out of your holster take a shot and try to holster your gun again that that material is going to crunch back down from the pressure of your belt and it's going to make one-handed holstering impossible so you're, you're going to need both hands to open up that holster to put it back in there that leads to problems especially if you take um take serious uh one-handed shooting which you know is a possibility so we're going to be talking about Kydex holsters. This is not the place to be talking about leather, or, you know, nylon or anything like that. And I think it's pretty well, you know, supported to not really, it's just not, it's not a good modern solution to carrying. So Kydex is where it's at. In terms of Kydex holsters, um, there are different levels, there are different levels of thickness for kydex most of the time thicker is typically better the structural integrity of it is very important because when you have a holster such as this it's going to be tucked inside your pants if you are carrying inside the waistband it's going to be tucked inside your pants and you're going to have a belt over that clipped in with your belt attachment and it's going to apply pressure onto that holster. There's going to be pressure along the spine here where the sight channel is and there's going to be pressure on the faces and the back, the faces of the holster, the back and the front. So in order to, in order to handle those kind of pressures, you want the Kydex to be of decent thickness. Now there's, you know, 0 0.028 kydex there's 0 0.060 kydex there's 0 0.080 there's 0 0.093 and then there's 0 0.125 now as a common practice among most holster companies they're running 0 0.060 and 0 0080 now if you find a holster that's 0 0.060 i would not recommend you get it they crack they wear down really i mean if you do holster it periodically just the friction from the trigger guard will notch a cut out of your 060 kydex it's too thin 080 is acceptable um is acceptable and what is predominantly in the market is 080 thickness we run no less than 093 for all of our holsters and we we 
it's 093 and up. So we will, uh, like our normal everyday carry inside the waistband uh, holsters are 093. And these are absolutely sturdy. These are, you can press on them. They're very, very sturdy, very, very durable and very structurally sound. So you can torque these down all you want. These aren't gonna crack, these aren't gonna uh, give you any issues whatsoever to where um, other, other holsters, if we were to do them in a thinner Kydex, you're gonna have those kind of issues. Um, so 093 or up, uh, we do uh, one, two, three. And like this one right here, this is a dual layer and we'll talk about that shortly. This dual layer is, I believe, 0.14 cuz it's a 08 and a 060 kydex put together. So this is a sturdy boy. It's a brick house. Um so that's about it for the thickness. Now, when you talk about features, there's it might not look like it, but you can stack a lot of usable features and a lot of really um cool technical specs into a holster to make it as optimal as possible for everyday carry. Um, one of the things, especially in modern guns, is that most guns are going to start having red dots on them, like this Glock. This is my everyday carry Glock. This is the Glock that I carry every day. This is normally my gun. Normally I have an X300 on this, but um, there's a TLR1 on it right now. But most guns uh, in the future, in the present, and in the future are going to more and more have red dots on them. And now, so I would recommend that no matter what, even if you don't have a red dot on your gun now, I recommend you get a holster cut for a red dot. So as you can see, this is the opening of the holster here. And instead of the holster being like this, there is a notch out right here to accommodate that um, red dot. So just kind of showing an example, putting that gun in there, it fully clears that uh, red dot. So it's completely clear of that. So if I even if I don't have this mailbox on my gun, if I had an RMR or something like that, it's going to give all the room needed to make sure that it fits the uh, red dot of my choosing. So that's really important. And like I said, even if you don't have a red dot on it now, it future proofs you to where you don't have to, you know, hack into this to cut a notch out for your red dot. Um, and you, or you don't have to order a whole nother one. So it saves you money and it saves you um, the inconvenience of just get one with a red dot uh, cut. Steer clear of companies that upcharge for a red dot cut. It, it doesn't take that much more effort to just modernize the holster. So that that's, that's silly. Um, with our, all of our holsters, they come standard with a red dot cut. You know, you, you, that's, it's not even an option to go without it unless you specifically message us saying, hey, I really don't want one with an optic cut. We'll, we'll oblige that, but there's really no purpose not to. It, it's a completely free thing. It's completely free. Um, the only uh, exception for us is we the, our regulator, which is our level two duty holster. It doesn't have a red dot cut. It has a red dot shroud that goes over it to offer full protection of that. Uh, red dot but we're talking about everyday carry items here so um yes but optic cut get a gun holster with an optic cut it's going to save you time it's going to give you that opportunity to dive into the red dot world which is far superior than using irons so um kind of moving on to the the ass end of this holster um mouth to ass right uh so these have this is a another standard thing, a standard feature that we have with our holsters. All of our holsters are going to be open bottom. Now, as you can see, you can see my beautiful baby blues through this holster. That's because it's completely flow through and we offer completely open bottom design. Now there's a reason behind that. Um, one is to allow a compensator. If you are running a compensator or a threaded barrel, on your blaster, this is going to accommodate it. It's completely flow through, it's completely open. That is awesome. And even, like I said, even with a red dot, same with the red dot, even if you don't have a compensator or a threaded barrel, 
it future proofs you to where later on, if a new piece of technology, new piece of kit, or you just have the gumption to try out a threaded barrel or a compensator or anything like that, you are able to do that with a holster with an open bottom. It accommodates you. That is um, another thing that you should look out for when it comes to, if you are in the market for a holster, that's what you need to look for, is to have that open bottom design. Another more important reason to have an open bottom uh, holster is it allows any kind of foreign debris, whether it be a spent casing, dirt, gravel, sand, I don't care what it is, it allows it, if it does just so happen to enter into the mouth of this holster, it flows right through. That way when you go to holster your firearm, it doesn't obstruct that holstering and um, could lead to either you not properly seating that holster, in, that gun in that holster to where it's not secure and it's not safe, obviously. And two, worse comes to worse, it, you know, accidentally or negligently discharges that firearm while you're trying to holster. Um, there's been uh, plenty of stories to where holstering a gun um, with a foreign object in there has led to discharges of the firearm or the gun, you know, falling out of the holster just because it didn't seat properly. So those are things that we find very important. And if that holster was crimped down at the bottom, like a lot of different holsters are, that would be an issue. Um, so flow through design, absolutely a necessity in uh, my eyes and in a lot of people's eyes. And that's what we, um, that's how we do. And so, you know, instead of, and another thing, you know, we'll talk about this as well, like the actual engineering of this. We have a flat right here. It's flat just to accommodate that light. It completely covers, try not to, try not to uh, flag you guys with this unloaded gun, but the, it, the holster here at the bottom, it goes straight to the bezel of that light, offering protection needed, the protection needed just to protect your light. If you are rolling around, stuff like that, it does protect it. But up here, we have it at an angle just to allow easier concealment. And we'll get a little bit more into detail and break this down using this holster as an example um, on what on the things we do to add as much comfort as possible. But coming, uh, coming to the mouth of the holster again, we're kind of going back and forth. Something that is kind of debated in the holster world um, is the covering of the magazine release. Um, so we at American Concealment Solutions, we make our holsters standard with the magazine release covered. And that impedes on administrative handling of the firearm so if you are someone who does like administrative reloads and for anyone who doesn't understand don't who doesn't know what an administrative reload is that means like when you're out on the range and you're doing like uh, a lot of law enforcement does this in their uh, training when they're out on like out in the range doing their qualifications and stuff they will do an admin reload which is accessing the magazine release while it's holstered in their holster and topping their gun off while it's holstered that's something that's not really conducted in the real world um, when it's actually going on and happening so we don't offer that because these aren't administrative tools that we're dealing with these are actual tools that are used for um, saving lives and, and preserving lives whatever you want to call it the reason why there's a couple reasons why we cover let me get this in here real quick I'll kind of show you but as you can see that magazine release is completely covered. And even if it was ambidextrous, it's gonna be covered on this side too, but it still allows a nice high and tight grip with your fingies up here. The reasons why we cover the magazine release is two reasons. I'm gonna say two reasons. The first reason is it prevents an accidental activation, actuation, whatever you want to call it, whatever makes me look smarter. It prevents an actuation of the magazine release while you're carrying it or yeah, while you're carrying it. So while, because we use thick Kydex, there is nothing that can press onto this holster that's going to activate that magazine release, nothing. 
absolutely nothing. However, if it was exposed and you do have a little bit of pudge or your, you know, love handles or something like that, like not everyone is, you know, as not everyone's Zac Efron, right? If Zac Efron's listening to this, hit me up. But, uh, you know, this could be a fabric, this could be a jacket, this could be your pudge, you know, getting out of a car, blah, 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 pushing into that and activating that magazine release. Um, there's a story that's kind of famous by the, the famous, world famous Clint Smith, shout out to Clint Smith, Thunder Ranch, um, that he, when he was uh, an officer, um, I forget, I don't know what state he was, but he was a police officer back in like the 70s, 80s, and he stepped out of his car, his patrol car, and he looked down and he saw that the magazine, um, that he activated his magazine, he activated his magazine release and the magazine was sitting in his seat and he had a single shot, he had the world's most expensive single shot 1911 and he worded it a lot more better than me and he had gravel, he had a gravel <laughs> voice, but I can't do that. So. But having that magazine release coverage is very important for us for that reason. And the second reason is especially for light bearing holsters, it covers that trigger guard more to where you cannot get your little grubby fingers in there to pull the trigger while it's holstered. One of the biggest, a big reason why a lot of pretty heavy hitting gun people do not carry a light on their gun is because most holsters that accommodate lights have such an opening here that they can get their fingers in there to activate the mat to, to pull the trigger. As you can see, there's, if, if you don't have the coverage going back far enough, AKA back where over the magazine release, you're not gonna have enough of a closure of this opening to protect that trigger guard, which is one of the most important features of a holster. So by having this material come back farther um, to cover that trigger, to cover that magazine release, it is impossible to get even my pinky in here. And you could ask, I mean, there's a lot of companies that do these kind of holsters where their magazine release is completely uncovered and you can get your finger into that. Um, you can get your finger completely in there and activate that trigger. You can't do that with our holsters. And we take pride in that and that's very important to us because again, that's the biggest feature of a holster, of a, you know, any kind of holster is to cover that trigger guard. We want to, uh, make sure that this doesn't go off inside of the holster. That's stupid. So those are the two reasons why we cover that magazine release. If people disagree with that, that's completely fine. But this is, that's why we do it. Um, so moving on to uh, different options that come with holsters. Uh, specifically ours, we're gonna talk about belt attachments. Now this one right here that we have, it's using ARC4 DCC discrete carry concepts, I'm pretty sure they're called clips. Um, not a huge fan of the clips, but they are very secure. I will give them that. Um, these are uh, two, normally the theory behind our, con our uh, concealment um, belt attachment kind of theory is we want two points of contact and we want them to be very secure. Um, so uh, for instance, you know, like these foamy clips here, we don't offer these on our holsters. If a guy takes you home and you walk in and on his apartment and in his apartment, you see one of these, you need to get the out of there because that's some broke ass. But these are foamy clips. A lot of like, you know, brokey holsters have these. These are plastic, these suck. They are, do not do well at all. Um, any kind of plastic clip that you see, and there, there's a lot of companies that do plastic clips of their own, that are their own style and stuff like that. Try to steer away from those. Get something that's metal, get something that's more secure. Um, we like uh, as secure of a method as possible. But for now, I'm gonna get the shit out of my face. So. Back to these DCC clips. These are nice and metal, they're springy. They have little hooks underneath them. And most importantly, something that people find valuable with these is that there's room behind these hooks to where you can tuck your shirt in behind it. So the only thing that they'll see is this clip, but you can be carrying while tucking your shirt in. So these are pretty nice as well. 
some others that we have, for instance, this uh, pretty cool uh, holster, and this is actually mine, it's a uh, dual layer, and we'll talk about that in a, in a little while. This has my most favorite um, kind of attachment method that I personally use in my uh, personal holsters, and these are dual soft loops, and as you can see, they're fucking on there. There we go. So, they're one directional pull soft loops. You can only pull them from top to bottom. You can't go bottom to top, stuff like that. These are the easiest belt attachment to get on and one of the hardest to take off when you don't want them to. And even when you do want them, they're kind of a fucking struggle. But um, these are really, really nice. They're very adjustable, they're very durable, and you know, they are, they're floppy boys, but um, they're very durable, um, they're adjustable, and they're secure. And again, we run two of them just because we like two connection points. We like that redundancy because we want the holster to stay where it needs to be. So even if you do have a clip or any kind of belt attachment, if one part of it fails, you have another one to keep that gun in place. So soft loops are one of my favorites and it's definitely another op offering. Something to go with the soft loops is a tuckable strut. This tuckable strut would sit lower on the holster down here and this uh, soft loop would attach up here and it would allow you to use these soft loops but also be able to tuck them in, tuck your shirt in behind them similar to these DCC clips. This is also another offering that we do. Um, so those are nice as well. Uh, some other offerings that we do is a monoblock. Monoblocks are cool. Um, they are another kind of secure metal clip that we find that is secure enough to uh, take care of the job at keeping your holster secured on your belt. They're very similar to the DCC clips. They're a little bit different, but uh, pretty nice and secure there as well. There's really no good way to have a tuckable version of this. So that's why I would recommend the DCC Arc 4s if you are looking for a tuckable option. The monoblock's not really gonna help you there. Lastly, what we're gonna talk about with belt attachment methods, this is a little micro holster that I made with some scrap for my uh, Derringer. Um, so this is the UltiClip XL. This is a little bit of an outlier when in terms of our theory of belt attachment method because there's only one of them. We don't run two of them, but this is the Ulti Clip XL. So what this is, is a clip here, just like this. But once you get it over your belt, or you could clip it onto your waistband if you don't have a belt, this is a beltless option that you could use. You take this lever here and you clamp that baby down and that offers a serious amount of pressure onto that clip and it clamps it on there. Why it is an outlier to where we don't have the redundancy of having two of them is we have the clip itself and the locking mechanism on it. So we kind of consider that as two options. This is a very secure method. And if you carry a gun light enough to where your drawstring of your sweatpants or, you know, leggings or yoga pants or dresses um, for all you uh, 40 cal carriers. Um, this might be a good solution. Like this Derringer here, it's very thin. As you can see, it's a very small gun. I have it over here, but I'm not gonna get it out, but it's very small. I could definitely carry this with a drawstring. And this right here allows me to clamp down on that but the reason why we also use the XL instead of the smaller Alti clip that's not as big as this is because this can go over your belt as well. So it's good for belt carry and it's also good for non-belt carry and it clamps down pretty good. Now these are all offerings for um, all of our holsters, all of our inside the waistband holsters that is. So that is uh, that's up to your discretion. That's if you are carrying without a belt with a belt if you need a tuckable option, we got you covered. And there are uh, there are other inside the waistband options that people do. Um, you know, there's a lot of them. I just would steer clear of plastic clips. You're not going to make it if you have plastic clips. Let's just be frank. Um, other parts of the holster, hardware-wise, are um, claws. Now right here, this is a concealment claw. This one also has it as well. This is called a mod wing, but there are a lot of other uh, 
There are a lot of other pieces of hardware that do the same kind of thing, but made by different companies. Um, what this does is this is an inside the waistband exclusive piece of hardware that only is really useful on inside the waistband holsters. This right here is a arm um, that has this little cleat and it has some texture there. This right here pushes onto the back of your um, belt while it's threaded through your belt attachment option. And what this does, what this does is push the gun closer to your body. So what it does is it pushes this, this the butt of the gun here, the, the mag and the grip closer to your body to print less and to have better concealment. And so that is absolutely pinnacle when it comes to an inside the waistband holster. If you are carrying a gun that is bigger, even if it's subcompact, um, you know, like this Derringer here, does this Derringer holster does not have a claw. It just can't, it's, it's way too small, but the grip is micro. So you, that's not really that big of a deal. But if you're carrying Glock 43, whatever, having this claw is gonna be sweet. It's gonna make that gun disappear so much better. It's gonna make it go away. And so any good inside the waistband holster is going to have this claw, especially if you're appendix carrying. If you're four o'clock carrying off to the side, it's not as big of a necessity, but that claw is still going to help. Appendix carry makes that gut. Appendix carry, that claw makes it disappear. It's very nice, especially if you apply the proper amount of pressure from your belt onto it, it's gonna go away. So this, um, this uh, claw right here, the, the mod wing, it doubles as retention. And we'll get into that later, but these two screws that are mounting this onto the holster also are the retention for this. And now not all claws do that, but this one does that. And we'll get to retention and fitment and what you need to look for into how tight it needs to be and all that kind of stuff. We'll get into that here in a second. Another thing when you're talking about features, I take this bad boy out, set her down, is the ergonomics and the overall design of this holster. If you think about it, this holster is going to be tucked down into your pants, especially in appendix, it's going to be down over by a leg or right in between on your crotch area, something like that. Even when it's over here, the ergonomics of this holster are very important. And by ergonomics, I mean, how are the edges? The edges need to be round. If you're buying a holster, look for rounded corners. If you see a holster and you're like looking into it and you see it and there's like hard, there's like hard corners and edges, don't, I, I highly advise you don't get that. You want to get a holster that keeps in mind that you will be carrying this and you don't want this little sharp corner digging into your leg all day, you're gonna be miserable and you're gonna to wanna to replace this holster that you just spent a good amount of money on. So as you can see, there ain't a sharp edge on this bitch. You want, even that, it's rounded off, round, round right here. You know, you're not gonna be running your fingers into your knuckles into this sharp thing when you go for a draw or when you go to reholster. You know, coming down, nice straight, round, round and the most important rounding of a corner is going to be these bot is going to be these bottom edges here that needs to be rounded off because that's where you know it's going to run into your pelvis it's going to run into your leg depending on what position you carry at that's going to run even if you're carrying on four o'clock it's going to run into your thigh so that needs to be round and this part needs to be round, especially for you right-handed people. And if you're carrying at like a one o'clock, that needs to be rounded right there because that's gonna be right where your thigh is, right to the side of it. So if you do lift up your leg, if you do lift up your leg, you don't wanna be running, grazing that corner, you're gonna be miserable. And back to the compensator cut, how we have it kind of at an angle, that's just to allow more ease of uh, carry because there's less material here and, and unless you know if we had it flat out and up that's going to add so much more material on there that you'll have to you know graze upon all day so rounded corners if your holster does not have rounded corners as an appendix carrier in, inside the waistband period you're doing something wrong you want to get that fixed and don't buy a holster that doesn't have rounded corners for the love of god 
Um, back to the, the adjustable retention. If you don't have this mod wing here and you just have, you're, you're go if you don't have this mod wing here, you're going to have some kind of way to adjust your holster retention, or you should. If there's a holster coming that doesn't have adjustable retention, I, I wouldn't get it just because yeah, you're gonna wanna need some adjustment. As you can see, there's a through screws here, right here, and there are rubber washers in here. And those rubber washers um, get squished down or get laxed up on, depending on if you need a tighter or looser kind of retention. So, and that's just these screws up here. So, even if you don't have this claw here, these screws are still gonna be here or in somewhere in this area. Now for a light bearing holster, the retention lies on the light body, the flashlight body, which is right here. So that's where the retention is. On a non-light bearing, I don't really have a good non-light bearing around, but the retention is gonna be on the trigger guard. So the retention is gonna be somewhere here or down here. So mostly for a bigger gun, for a normal size gun, the retention would be over here on the underside of that trigger guard. So that's where the, the screws will be. And it's righty tighty, makes it tighter, lefty loosey, loosens it up. Now, a lot of times, uh, kind of misconception goes that people that the retention needs to be set to where you can, um, you know, with a gun with a loaded magazine in it, um, you need to be able to put it in the holster and kind of be able to shake it a little bit. That is a decent metric to go by. However, it needs some nuance because there's going to be an increased amount of pressure applied to this holster once you get it in your pants and tighten down that belt. That's gonna add pounds and pounds of extra pressure. So that's something you have to take into consideration when you're talking about the draw as well. So getting to a point to where you can kind of set it in the holster and give it a couple shakes before it actually comes out, that's a good start. But you wanna tuck that baby in and get it tightened down to a comfortable level. That way you can um, loosen it, tighten it, however you want to make sure, you know, do a couple dry fire, you know, presses, you know, draws to make sure that it's fitting right and that it's not going anywhere, but it's also coming out reliably. You just got to find that sweet spot. And that's why having it adjustable is so imperative. Um, just a couple other things. There are additional options that holster companies do offer. At American Concealment Solutions, we kind of pride ourselves into having um, more options than most. You know, whatever kind of holster you really need, um, we cover it pretty well. Um, in the inside the waistband realm, there are a couple different options that we do offer, one of which is fabric wrap. I do not have my fabric wrap holster. We'll have to get that. but. Um, dual layer is something that I've mentioned and dual layer, what that means is it's just two pieces of Kydex, um, together. As you can see, I have this nice Cryptek Typhon, uh, on the outside, which is one of my favorite textures. I absolutely love this. It's, it's amazing. And then I have a Tiffany blue inner, and I think that's a really cool, um, design. I've kind of fallen in love with this combination. But it's two put together and they're fused together through the, um, the buffing process and the sanding process and they become one. And what that does is that makes a very, very thick, very, very sturdy, absolute monster tank of a holster. And that's an option that we offer with every single build, every single holster model we have because, you know, we want at least 093 and this is far more than that. So it meets all of our criteria and it allows a huge amount of customization options and color options that you can use. Now, um, aside, really the, the only benefits to having this is one, it allows you to have a way more aesthetic holster, a lot more, you know, just, just cool looking and stuff like that. But the most important thing is it, it, it adds a severe amount of durability. Um, even though this 093 is gonna treat you very well, it's, it, it's, you're gonna 
be able to beat the hell out of this holster. This is just going to give you a little added um, durability. It can never be too, you know, it's not, it's, you know, it's not going to be a problem. So a little added durability there. Um, another thing that we offer um, is the uh, concealment wedge. Now I don't have that, but we will put up some pictures. And what that is, is if we go to the back of this holster, you can put a concealment padding, a little padding on the bottom there. And what that does is that offers a little bit more comfort if you are a little bit more sensitive of this bottom pushing into your torso, your lower abdominal pelvic region for too long you might feel a little discomfort. That round wedge will do two things. One, it will make it a little bit more comfortable. It'll add a little bit of padding, a space in between your skin and this uh, holster. But also what it will do is if there is a pad here, it will push the grip, the top part of this gun, a little bit more into your torso, thus concealing it even better. So if you have a uh, concealment claw and you also have that wedge it's going to not only torque this grip into your body a little bit but it's also going to push um, everything else the grip and the red dot everything back into your torso as well so it's going to do a two-fold thing with those as a combo to offer as optimal of a concealment as possible so um, fabric wrap um, Fabric wrap is also, it's a thing that we offer for all of our holsters. It's where you take a sheet of Cordura, which is a very durable kind of nylon, and it has a lot of cool patterns, colors, you name it. Um, there's pretty much every kind of pattern imaginable for Cordura. We'll put up a picture or a video of one of our holsters that have a uh, fabric wrap. The benefit to that is pretty skeptical. Um, other than just like the plain aesthetic, kind of like a dual layer offers as well. You know, there's a, a lot more customization options you know, that you can do that are pretty cool. It actually, it adds like a little aesthetic when it comes to the actual material being covered. But arguably, especially for outside the waistband holsters, it can add a little bit of an added benefit because of the sound that this makes. You know, with, uh, I feel like I'm on an ASMR video, like a loser, but uh, if you are walking through the the woods, you know, toughen it, larpen, you know, run it sticks and twigs and bushes and stuff, it's going to make this kind of noise. But if you add that little layer of fabric over it, it will deafen that just a little bit. That's, you know, just talking theory. And obviously for an inside the waistband holster, you're not going to be coming in contact with that problem. So really it's just for aesthetic purposes. Um, I think they look really cool. The one that I carried for the longest time had um, a fabric wrap and I thought it was pretty cool. I still think it is, but that is really the only benefit to that. Um, but we do offer it and that's you know just one of those customizable features. So that is about it for choosing a holster. Um, you know, just keep informed, uh, look into things, you know, if, don't spend your hard-earned money on a holster that's going to, uh, you know, break prematurely because of just the overall material quality and construction. Uh, make sure you're buying it from a company that's going to treat you right, and you know, con you know, get back with you in a timely manner when they try when you try to contact them for questions or any kind of concerns. Make sure they have like a bomb-proof warranty. Uh, and make sure that they have the features that you need to make sure that you have a holster that's going to last you and treat you right and be able to carry that gun reliably and effectively because this is very, very important. This is containing a very, very important thing. If you have a holster and it leads to the discharge of this gun or something like that when you're out in public, that's jail time, man. So this is a big deal. You want to get a holster that treats you right and keeps you safe and keeps this from, you know, getting you in trouble. So, um, yeah, again, this is a, and this is an extension of our series of my pocket dump and we're just getting into more details. Now these are, you know, holsters that 
I use and stuff, but this these aren't the holsters that I actually use every single day. So I'm just showing you, like I don't use these clips and all that kind of stuff. So I'm just showing you options that are outside of just what I carry because it's not just about what I carry. I don't think you should go out and pick exactly what I carry. I think you should just, you should know exactly the details from a holster maker. You know, with me making, you know, as many holsters as I've made and continuing to make, I think I might know a little bit of thing or two about it. Not trying to sound cocky or anything, but I just think I should extend that information to you guys. I feel a little obligation. So, uh, like and share and follow and comment and do whatever you got to do on this video. We definitely appreciate it. Uh, we're on Facebook, Instagram, X, Twitter, whatever you want to call it. Um, if you guys want to place an order on get one of these holsters, we will absolutely love to do that for you. Um, you could use code BUGOUT to save 10%. Uh, we really would appreciate it. And uh, if you want any of this apparel, you can add that on as well. Um, all of that means the world to us. Um, we're growing day by day and uh, we'd love to uh, continue to help people out. Um, so this is not the last time you'll be hearing about different gear and stuff. We'll be uh, doing some other videos, most likely about pistols next and what we would recommend to look out for in terms of what makes a good concealed carry pistol. So um, we will go ahead and end it at that. Uh, have a good day, guys.